Hi everyone, The Lone Wolf here and welcome to another EVE Online discussion video. In today's video I want to talk a little bit about some of the news updates that we got for EVE Online in the last week or so. It's actually been quite a lot all of a sudden, this is coming out with a lot of information and so I thought it would, was worth it to make a video on it, try to digest everything that's happening there. Before we jump in on the articles of course, some bad news as well, CCP Guard is leaving CCP. Talk about someone that has been there for a long time i think it's like 16 years that he has worked there and uh, he made a forum post uh, explaining that uh, he basically is going for something completely different in a completely different industry as well um from his post uh, i would say that he was still pretty positive in general now some people may again uh, call that naive of course everyone with a brain uh, does uh, try to leave their company in an elegant way so as to not burn bridges or to not cause trouble uh, looking for other opportunities but uh, I personally have lots of respect for CCP Guard and I fully believe him when he says that uh, he has the feeling that he's living on a high note and that uh, CCP uh, actually has lots of uh, exciting plans for us install, uh, installed and ready. So let's see if, uh, if any of that turns out to be true of course. Um, we're gonna go over some of the dev blogs that CCP has been sharing. If you want to follow along you can always go to evonline.com then you press on the article um, link and uh, down here the dev blocks is really uh, what I'm going for but before that of course uh, we also have the 64 bit client mass test that is going to take place at actually day of the release of this video so uh, very nice on the one hand to see that they are working on that and that we're gonna get to have like a first test about the 64 bit client I am personally really curious to see what kind of performance comes out of that uh, a little bit too bad that this mass test will take place before I get my new graphics card but that's how the way uh, how things go of course uh, you can't always decide when things come out and uh, it's not all about uh, your own release schedule of course but uh, yeah definitely something uh, that I look forward to uh, to see how all of that is going to evolve now if you click on the read more dev blogs then we get to this page and uh, not sure if we have to cover all of those in detail but for instance for the invasion tournament series maybe I'll quickly open that up uh, what I found to be very interesting here is that uh, winners were winning for uh, were playing for let's see here uh, Brave Capsuleers who decide to take on this challenge will be fighting for more than just the title, plex and bragging rights. Every winning team from all seven locations will be invited for a paid trip to CCP's home in Reykjavik to showcase their prowess in battle and compete against each other at EVE FanFest 2020. So it's not exactly uh, showing that it's uh, the EVE tournament that's coming back, but it's definitely, I think, showcasing CCP's... Um, you know, desire to uh, keep some sort of uh, of, of hardcore esports like PvP scene uh, going. This time, it looks like it's a single elimination, two versus two tournaments that are going to take place in all of these different locations. So, pretty interesting. Um, I unfortunately won't be at any of these locations, but I do look forward to seeing uh, what uh, what they can manage with uh, with these uh, these these smaller tournaments and uh, if they're entertaining to watch or not. Of course, uh, when it comes to the uh, invasion tour, uh, I personally mostly look forward to any announcements about the future of the game. Uh, after that, as we've said, the 64-bit client, actually, this dev blog has quite a bit more information as well that I think might be important uh, for people to uh, read up on. Uh, number one, um, when they come out with the 64-bit client, they are going to again up the requirements for EVE Online. So look out if you're really playing on potato mode. Uh, this might be the time to look for some upgrades as well in hardware. Uh, don't think we got any uh, specific timelines on when they're planning to release the 64-bit client but yeah they're gonna jump to DirectX 12 with that and uh, it is really CCP's commitment to uh, continuously improving the game improving the engine improving the graphics of EVE Online that I think is uh, showcased with this dev block and uh, yeah this one is definitely something that I'm very excited about as well I want to see what a 64-bit client can do compared to the current client that we help and as, uh, as we've said there are tests that are going to start as well uh, in March when it comes to that 64-bit client actually on the duality server not on the singularity uh, test server so for Mac users 
a bit vague but they are working with their partners to ensure that all of the above also applies to the mac client so um this should also mean that they're gonna retire directx 9 uh when it uh directx 9 support whenever they're coming out with a 64-bit client and i'm not sure if they'll like force everyone on that or if you'll have basically the option between 32-bit and directx 11 or 64-bit and directx 12. not exactly sure how all of that is going to work but yeah an upgrade in the engine is in the works and uh, is definitely on the way read through the dev block here especially i would say if you're on the really low end of of the machines uh, that ccp recommends for evo online at the moment uh, definitely something to uh, keep a close eye on and then finally, uh, oh, well, I shouldn't say finally, we also want to take a look at skills on the mount. But uh, this one, war uh, sometime changes, uh, sometimes changes. That is definitely uh, very interesting as well. Something that we knew was, was maybe coming, but uh, in line of CCP's past uh, experiences that we've had when it comes to uh, continuing to iterate on, on ideas. Uh, it's a bit faster than what I personally expected, but basically they're giving us a full roadmap on their plans for the uh, war declarations in EVE Online. So in December, they already came out with the war eligibility, which means that only corporations that own a structure, that have a structure deployed, uh, can now be war decked. In March, they're going to close some loopholes and uh, do some bug fixes. And then in April, they'll remove the neutral assistance. That is absolutely a big one. No more neutral remote reps anymore. Uh, that will actually be punished by Concord. Uh, uh, from that point on definitely something that have, should have been done much sooner but this is so very welcome because it's a super annoying situation to find yourself in uh, i'm not sure if any of you guys remember when my structures were first attacked sure it was only three four battleships uh, that were that were there but you could also see the neutral logistics hanging around grid ready to uh, intervene if uh, it, it was needed and those guys would just basically be completely uh, out of touch uh, for anyone that would have joined the war so that is definitely a big change that uh, I think is very positive positive. and then for the release after that already in May they'll have uh, the war headquarters war cost simplifications improve uh, mutual wars and the war UI improvements now I'm not gonna go over the entire dev block uh, you've got some metrics as well here uh, that's maybe very interesting uh, with the changes percentage of non-mutual wars with at least one kill in a given day have gone up from around 10% towards let's say 15% or so and then rate of new players joining a player corp by day three has also increased uh, after the changes to the war deck so only a positive change here but basically I think what you uh, need to remember about uh, how the final product for the war declaration is going to work is mostly these war headquarters which basically forces the attacking corporation to um, create a war headquarters in HiSec, a structure that they own in HiSec, and that will basically be a target that the defenders can go after if they want to uh, finish the war and, and basically that means that they don't have to either avoid the entire thing um, and that they're not uh, restricted to having to undergo the entire war. They actually have a goal that they can work towards, destroy that structure and then the war will be over as well. Also, really interesting in my opinion for the mercenary uh, mercenaries out there. Something that's not easy to do in EVE Online. In NOSEC you do have mercenaries. PL actually used to be mostly a mercenary uh, coalition uh, that, uh, that would be hired to uh, fight really big wars and things like that. But this can really give a big boost to players that want a sort of a mercenary playstyle. Because just organize yourself, be able to bash these war headquarters and I'm sure uh, in war decks that you will find customers that will actually now um, not just have to ask you to well defend us for a week or so uh, no this time they can say all right go destroy that structure finish that war for us we'll pay you this much is very interesting change uh, and, and in my opinion uh, definitely a very nice one an advantage here as well for the attackers they basically can create a place where hostilities and PvP is much more likely 
quickly without having to travel after their targets which you know if anyone would war deck me it's gonna be a pain in the butt sure you're, you're gonna get some structures out of it because there's no way that I can defend them against uh, uh, against uh, even a, a half-sized corporation but if you want any actual PvP kills well I've got plenty of jump clones all over the universe uh, in places that are quite remote so you'll have lots of traveling to do in order to get some action now with the war headquarters well if um if I want to then uh, uh, try to take you on, then we'll, I'll, I'll look for some allies and then I'll come and attack your, your headquarters, of course. So you already have a much better chance at finding PvP without needing to move too much uh, in order to get it. So really interesting idea, not something that I was expecting, especially with such a concrete and nice roadmap here with uh, March, April and May releases that will support this roadmap for the war declaration so super excited about that sounds very very good and outside of some loopholes that i think some people have noted in the comments uh, which by the way you should definitely share since it be still looking for feedback i think all the way down here uh you know you've got a link to the thread if you have ideas or worries especially when it comes to this system go over the dev blog and share them with ccp for sure but uh, i think it's all looking very very promising for the war declarations and then we have a, a final uh, dev blog which was actually the first one that came out uh, in this rush of information that ccp came out with uh, about a week ago skills on the mount changes coming to the skill system and man that title i think had everyone's uh, heart skip a beat there i was a little bit worried myself my very first thought was oh my god real money for certain skills or something like that fully trained but no it is not like that at all uh, we can all put down the pitchforks uh, this is actually in my opinion another good change uh, they are going to take a look at uh, basically allowing you to inject certain skills straight from the character sheet rather than have to go find a skill book somewhere else not for all of them there will still be the opportunity to uh, trade and to do some market games when it comes to rare and more expensive skill books but you're no longer going to be able to uh, try to overprice newbies in their uh, starter station and things like that all of these will will now just be basically available for isk uh, by this skill to unlock it for trading for let's say a million isk straight from the character sheet uh, just some convenience i don't think it takes away too much from the complexity of eve online and i myself can still have remember when i first started playing the game that for some skill books i was a little bit annoyed with man do i really have to look for a station an npc that somehow sells this one skill book that i need and then you of course go to a trade hub to try and find it and i remember yeah that's probably a pretty high price for what i'm buying but i'm lazy so i'm gonna get it and uh, they're gonna take that away a little bit but definitely not for all skills so i personally don't think it's going to be uh, too big of a problem they're also going to change the pricing of skills not exactly sure which direction they're gonna go but that has not been touched i think for a very long time so it definitely makes a lot of sense here as well so yeah skills uh on demand uh don't think the worst here it's basically something that will hopefully help the newbies find their way in eve online a bit more easily and i personally have no real objections for this system here again ccp does want your feedback Feedback, feel free to browse to the dev blog click on the link and then share your comments in the forums and so yeah that basically finishes this discussion video on uh, updates for eve online there's quite a lot of them there's probably a lot more in the works as well but uh, i'm very happy to see that uh, ccp is finally coming out with new information about what they're planning for the game with uh, with mass tests as well second mass test here for the 64-bit client all of a sudden for 2019 uh, should basically be up and running uh, by the time that you're watching this video um, and uh, yeah let's hope that uh, that they can come out with some very interesting information as well during the uh, invasion world tour with all the events there and that uh, will get a nice view of where eve online is going despite the fact that some of our favorite devs like ccp guard now are also leaving ccp um, let's see what uh, all of these changes will bring for the future thank you very much for watching guys and as always i'll see you next time